Hello, hello. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the theories of failure for composite materials. And uh, in previous videos, we have already made MATLAB codes in order to solve a problem and to get uh, different type of stresses, strain, shear strain, uh, in different type of axes like local axis, global axis, and everything. So we know how to get the values, but we don't know the failure criteria. So in order to get that we need theory of failure so basically as we know the successful design of a structure offer requires efficient and safe use of materials and therefore theories are developed in order to compare the state of these stresses in the materials these safe materials to failure criteria and uh, these failure of theories that are being stated are uh, stated are validated by experiments so coming to the laminate part that we are going to discuss in lamina and laminate actually the strength is uh, dependent on the strength of individual lamina and uh, various theories have been deployed for uh, studying the failure of angle lamina and these theories basically uh, are always dependent on uh, normal and shear strength of unidirectional lamina. So but uh, coming to the next slide in isotropic material if we uh, say like uh, steel generally have uh, two strength parameters like normal strength and shear strength in cases such as uh, concrete gray, gray cast iron we have uh, difference a uh, different tension and compression so simple uh, failure theory for isotropic material is used to find it actually is based on finding the principal normal stresses and maximum shear stresses so uh so these uh, stresses if the uh, these maximum stresses if they are greater than the ultimate strength then it indicates a failure of the material so in failure uh, coming to this slide failure of such material can be predicted by using uh, maximum principal stress criteria maximum principal strain criteria and for ductile material if we say we have tresca theory we have one one mice strength uh, stress or distortion energy energy theory and uh, if we say none of these uh, uh, failure criteria can be used for materials like uh, composite lamina and uh, uh, the basic reason we can't use this for lamina is because if we come to lamina uh, the weakest uh, direction of the lamina which we have might not be in uh, aligned with the direction of the principal stresses of the lamina and therefore in order to get the uh, there are different uh, set of uh, failure theories for this type of uh, case which can predict the failure of composite lamina so coming to those and uh, also in uh, lamina the failure theories are not based on principal normal stresses and principal shear strength uh, rather they are based on the stresses in the material or the local axis because the lamina is orthotropic and its properties are different and at different angles because uh, obviously it's the property of orthotropic material unlike an isotropic material so if we can say like in uh, unidirectional lamina there are two material axes one is parallel to the fiber and one is perpendicular to the fiber thus uh, four normal strength parameters for unidirectional uh, lamina we have and uh, one for tension one for compression and uh, in each of the two material axis direction like for both axis we have these two so total four and uh, one more we have that is the shear strength so in total we have five uh, uh, five strength parameters ultimate longitudinal tensile strength ulti ultimate longitudinal compressive strength transverse tens uh, tensile strength and ultimate transverse compressive strength and one is ultimate in player in plane shear strength so and uh, coming to the types of theories next uh, like uh, all the th failure theories for the laminas and uh, composite material that we have basically can be divided into three main categories first one is limit theories so as the name suggests uh, limit theories in this uh, if uh, the values are above the limit then the material is obviously a fail the failure occurs and if the uh, parameters are within the limit the material is safe and uh, ne coming to the next interactive theories and in interactive theories we have uh, Wu theory, Hill theory 
and uh, this is just a step further from limit theories and uh, it considers the interaction between the stress and strain components in a system so we will discuss that more about in the coming PPT and the third one is the main thing uh, in interactive theory we know we can know the overall failure we can predict it but we don't know the mode exact failure mode so in order to get that we have the third kind of theories which is failure mode based theories and uh, basically in this presentation I am going to cover only uh, uh, these uh, first two types and coming to that we have maximum stress failure theories so uh, this is the first type and uh, for this type uh, for this theory actually this is related to the maximum normal stress theory by Rankine and maximum shear stress theory by Tresca for in case of isotropic material basically and the stresses acting uh, on the lamina uh, basically are uh, resolved first into normal and shear stresses in the local axis not in the global axis in the local axis and uh, the main point the main fa failure theory uh, the main point in this theory is the stress acting on a lamina uh, like the failure is predicted in the lamina if any of the normal stresses or the shear stresses in the local axis of the lamina is equal or exceeds the corresponding ultimate strength of the unidirectional lamina so normal shear stresses if if they are more than the ultimate strength that is failure if they are within the limits then well and good it's all safe so coming down we have three uh, relations and basically it compares all these uh, parameters and we should be in between both uh, one compressive and one is for tensile so next one next parameter that we consider is uh, actually strength ratio and uh, strength ratio can be detailed the concept of strength ratio is applicable to any failure theory uh, basically uh, in previous theory as we saw like uh, failure theory can a failure can be determined if if the material violates the inequality if it doesn't violate the inequality then the material is safe so what what is different in strength ratio so uh, the main concept for having a strength ratio is because the previous theory does not give us information of how much the load has increased in the lamina or how much the load should be decreased if the lamina has failed correct no so like we don't know how much uh, load increased when the lamina was safe and how much load decreased should be decreased if the lamina is failed so we don't know what adjustment we should make so for that we need strength ratio and uh, strength ratio can be uh, determined as uh, maximum load which can be applied divided by load applied and uh, so what's the meaning of this if uh, strength ratio is greater than one then the lamina is safe and applied stress can be increases by the factor of strength ratio and if if it's lesser than sr then uh, we can say it's unsafe and if it's s equal to sr that is that means that is particular failure load so again what was the meaning for this the main uh, reason that we had strength ratio was because the previous theory do, does, does not give us the information about how much the load can be increased if the lamina was safe or how much the load should be decreased if the lamina has failed so that's why we need this strength ratio and uh, coming next is failure envelopes and uh, this is a three dimensional plot that we create uh, we have uh, three dimensional plot of combination of the normal and shear stresses that can be applied to an angle lamina just before the failure occurs and uh, because drawing three dimensional graph can be time consuming one may develop failure envelopes for constant shear stresses and then use the two other normal stresses sigma x and sigma y of uh, of the two axes and uh, so basically what's the point over here if the applied stress is within the failure envelope that we have developed then the lamina is said to be safe 
if it's if it exceeds the limit then we can say the lamina has failed and coming back to the next one uh, maximum strain failure theory so this can be defined as the theory which is based on the maximum normal strain theory of sand venant and maximum shear stress theory by tresca as applied to the isotropic materials and the first thing that we do is the strain that uh, that is applied to the lamina we first resolve those strain into the local axis and the main statement the statement for this theory is the failure is predicted in the lamina if any of the normal or shearing strain in the local axis of the lamina becomes equal or if it exceeds the ultimate strain of the unidirectional lamina basically your normal or shearing strain if it exceeds the ultimate strain of the unidirectional lamina in the local axis then the uh, we can say the failure is predicted in the lamina there will be a failure and uh, this uh, theory can be uh, represented by these three relations and which basically suggests that the uh, normal stresses normal strain values should be within the limits and the normal shear strain value that should also be within the limits and if these relationships are being violated then we can say the failure is predicted and will occur in the lamina so next one is interaction failure theory so why interaction failure theory we have already discussed uh, for the limit theory all the uh, theories which we have discussed till now are the limit type theory and uh, there it does not consider the relationship or interaction between the stress strain components within a system so in order to get that we use interaction failure theory which comprise of uh, psi hill and psi wu so coming back uh, coming to the first uh, theory that is psi hill theory so this theory is based on the distortion energy failure theory of von mises distortion energy yield criteria for isotropic material as applied to the anisotropic materials and as we know that distortion energy is actually a part of total strain energy in a body and the strain energy in a body consist of two parts one the uh, one can be due to the change in volume which can be called as dilation energy and the other can be called due to the change in shape which is actually the distortion energy and the main statement of this theory is it is assumed that the failure in ma material takes place only when the distortion energy is greater than the failure distortion energy of a material so if the uh distortion energy exceeds the limit and exceeds the, the maximum failure distortion energy then the material has uh, is said to have failure and uh, where is the relation yeah so over here we have the relation so basically hill adopted the von mises distortion energy yield criteria for of uh, iso anisotropic material and then psi adapted it to the unidirectional lamina and basically together we got this relationship which well defines the theory and uh, if we see in this relation the components g1 g2 g3 g4 g5 g6 all these components can be uh, actually found out using the strength criteria depending on the failure strengths that we can apply and get these values which we are not going to discuss all that uh, basically we will get all these g1 g2 g3 g6 values and uh, after applying unidirectional lamina if if it's assumed then uh, the equation is re reduced in the in this form so basically we have to remember this and uh, now uh, coming to this uh, theory uh unlike the maximum strain and maximum stress failure theory psi hill failure theory actually consider the interaction among, among the three unidirectional lamina strength parameters and uh, but uh, if we see over here the psi hill failure theory does not distinguish between the compressive and tensile strength of its equation so this can result in actually the underestimation of maximum loads that can be applied when compared to other failure theories and uh, due to this psi failure theory underestimates the failure stress 
because what's the reason for that the transverse tensile strength of the unidirectional lamina is generally much lesser than the transfer compressive strength so the compressive strength is not usually considered that's the reason over here so the second type of theory which we'll come across in the interactive failure theory is interaction failure theory is psi wu failure theory and uh, basically this failure theory is based on the total strain energy failure theory of uh, Beltrami and uh, Sai who applied the applied the failure theory to a lamina in a plane strain uh, stress so these conditions we have to remember where where is are these uh, failure theories apply because that's the main part and uh, this one is applied to the lamina in plane stress a lamina is considered to be failed if this particular relationship that we have over here if this is violated we can say the laminar is considered to have failed and uh, this failure failure theory is more general so why it is more general because as we know in psi v theory we don't uh, it doesn't consider or it doesn't distinguish between the compressive and uh, uh, compressive and tensile strength so over here it is it distinguishes between compressive and tensile strength of the lamina and therefore it is more general than psi hill and uh, all the components that, that are h1 h2 h6 h11 h22 all these can be found out by using the strength parameters of a unidirectional lamina again we are not going to discuss the derivation of it we are just going to see these values which we get and uh, as you can see the these values can be uh, determined easily and uh, only the component h12 that cannot be determined by applying the strength parameters and h12 is basically found out experimentally by this is done experimentally by knowing the biaxial strain a stress at which the lamina fails and then substituting the value of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma uh, and tau 1 2 so we are not going to uh, get in depth of that we are just basically discussing the failure theories so this was the last theory of the interactive failure theories so if we come to the overview or the summary of this whole presentation that we get that is uh, we can get all the stress and strain values but we can uh, but in order to get the failure criteria we need the failure stress the failure uh, theories and there are basically two type three th type of theories first one was uh, the limit theory if the parameter exceeds the limit then the, the, uh, the material is said to have failed if it's bit under the limit it's said to have uh, safe it is said to be safe the second one is interactive because in the limit one they don't consider the interaction between stress and strain we come to the uh, it, the second one that is uh, interactive uh, theories so over here we can uh, actually consider the interaction between stress strain components we have psi wu and psi hill theory and in psi who in psi hill theory actually uh, we can't uh, distinguish between the tensile and compressive strength and in order to overcome that we need the psi wu theory is therefore needed in order to distinguish between the compressive and tensile strength uh, st uh, strength so these were basically just a short presentation on the types of failure theories which are being used in the composites so thank you very much